Hey guys, welcome back to Vision All Access and today is Apple Day. That's right, the day for Apple fanboys to rejoice has finally come and we're covering it here on Vision All Access. Now, it wasn't exactly the Apple event that was rumored because we were supposed to get... Yeah, all this. What did we actually get? But anyway, we're excited, so let's just jump into it. So of course, with all Apple's grandiose events, they like to wow and stun everybody. And today was definitely no exception. So after a very nice introduction by CEO Tim Cook, we got the brand new Series 4 Apple Watch. Little disclaimer here, all the prices in this video are gonna be in Canadian dollars because of course I am Canadian and proud to be. But of course for American pricing, please check your local apple.com. So the Apple Watch, probably my second favorite all-time smartwatch. Um, the, my last really big favorite was the Moto 360. I don't even think the Moto 360 supported anymore. But we're here to talk about Apple. We're looking at a slightly lower form factor than the Series 3 watch. Also, the back is now no longer encompassed in sapphire and steel. Now it's encased in ceramic and sapphire glass. So this is gonna give better cellular connectivity for the cellular model. If you're one of those people that loves to take phone calls on their Apple Watch, you're gonna be really impressed with the speaker, now 50% louder. Apparently they've re-engineered the whole speaker system uh, in the Apple Watch, so that's gonna make some people very happy. Another thing that took some re-engineering was actually the digital crown on the side that everybody just loves to spin and spin through their apps and notifications. Now it's got a haptic feedback engine into it. So when you go through the individual cars, you'll get a little buzz on the side of your finger when you're scrolling through. So might make for a more enjoyable experience. Who knows, we'll have to test it. Now I will say that the Apple Watch is one of the things that I am looking forward to possibly getting if I actually dive off the deep end and go full Apple at the end of this year. But uh, jury's still out on that. Price for the watch start at $5.19. But of course, me being the bargain hunter that I am, I like to take advantage of the really good deals. So if I do get an Apple Watch, if I go full Apple, I'll probably be aiming for that Apple Watch Series 3, which I still think is a beautiful watch, coming in at a price tag of only $3.62. But I know you guys and gals, you're not here to hear about the watches. You're here to talk about the brand new iPhones and we got not one, not two, but three different versions. That's it. Three. So start your drooling. So the leaks did come true on the names. We are now looking at the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. That's right. Once again, little disclaimer, if you guys watched my iPhone X video, you know that I'm keeping to the name iPhone X because iPhone 10 is just not as cool as iPhone X. So XS, XS Max, that's my names for them. So the XS comes in at a diagonal of 5.8 inches. This phone is really just the iPhone X relaunch essentially with some better internals. I'm gonna be quite honest with that. But the Max definitely earns its name as one of the biggest smartphone screens you can buy. We all remember the Samsung Galaxy Note with that massive 6.4 inch display. Yeah, Apple's playing a who's is bigger with a 6.5 inch super retina display. Both these phones sport the same kind of display. They're AMOLED technology borrowed from Samsung. <clears throat> but still gorgeous displays, full body, and yes, the notch is still there. Now, I actually don't get too hot under the collar for the notch on this particular phone because it does house those facial ID sensors with their new face lock technology, which has actually gotten better, or so they claim, a little faster. They come in three different color options, gold, silver, and space gray. For all of those expecting a black edition, eh. Hey, don't blame me, right layer to Tim Cook. 
Powering this, of course, Apple decided to add some bittersweet silicone to it with a new A12 Bionic chip, an upgrade from last year's A11. Backing up that A12 Bionic chip, we've got four gigabytes of RAM on board. Storage options are as follows, all onboard storage, so there's no expandable micro SD. That's not exactly too much of a surprise, being this is Apple. The two phones will also both sport dual camera technology on the back, so no triple camera setup as was rumored, but these cameras definitely look like they got it what's going on. Not to mention they did make a little snapshot about a smart HDR technology that apparently is gonna make these photos almost as good, if not better, than the Pixel 2. Keep it tuned to my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I try to upload all those simultaneously. I'll try to get some camera shots and you guys be the judge. Last thing to talk about for the iPhone isn't really gonna be that much of a big deal for most people, it's not really to me. But if you're a traveler and you like taking your cell phone with you, this is the first iPhone to actually sport dual SIM capability. To do this into iPhone XS and XS Max, we built a technology called DSDS, or dual SIM, dual standby. What do you think? Is the XS and XS Max your phone that you're gonna pick up next? We'll see. Pre-orders start right here. But like I said, there wasn't just two versions of the phone that were released. The iPhone XR. It's made from a 7000 series aerospace grade aluminum. We got the iPhone XR. So this phone doesn't exactly have the same specs because of course to offer a lower cost phone with the same specs as the higher cost phone, well that's redundant. Apple being the smart cookie that it is when it comes to marketing. You're no match for my brains. Gave this phone definitely some guts, but just not to the super high end that the other phones are at. We got an IP67 dust and water resistance as opposed to the IP68 on the newer phones. The screen size of this phone comes in one variant, 6.1 inch uh, LCD. So this is not AMOLED technology, liquid retina display. Resolution is gonna suffer just a little bit here. 828 by 1792 pixels. So we're not exactly talking full HD at 1080p, but definitely HD past 720. So the iPhone XR is going to launch with only three gigabytes of RAM, just like the aforementioned iPhone X that we got last year, but it is gonna be powered by the same processor as the new iPhone XS and iPhone XS Max. The world's first seven nanometer processed chip. 3D Touch and Force Touch definitely take a back seat here as they are not included on the new budget iPhone. However, we do get a haptic touch engine. I don't know how this is exactly going to perform. They did mention when you go quick launch the camera from the home screen, you get a little bit of a haptic touch feedback. We'll see how that works. Face ID technology is the exact same as the new iPhones. However, that back camera better sign up for Tinder because it's single. <laughs> you like what I did there? It is absolutely stunning. It comes incredible new finishes. White, black, blue, coral, yellow, each beautifully designed with that aluminum finish. There's even an incredible product red one as well, and it is beautiful. All in all, I think the iPhone XR will definitely be a popular model. Is price lower at just a hair over $1,000 Canadian? No! Um, prices for all three variants you can find right here. So guys, that's my in-depth look at the Apple event that happened today. I think Apple really brought to the event uh, some really great things. The iPhones are nice. Can it justify the cost? Maybe, because this is just a note, the iPhone X, the 10th anniversary edition iPhone is discontinued. It is no longer available to order on the Apple website. So unfortunately, you don't get the option to go back to last year's classic design. iPhone 7 and iPhone 8 are still available on the website and also at carriers, so keep an eye out for some special deals there. I also wish they would have released a brand new Mac Mini. I know uh, one of my friends would definitely have been interested in that. Uh, even one of my favorite YouTubers, Jonathan Morrison, would have been interested in a brand new Mac Mini, but who knows, maybe next year they'll refresh that. But what do you guys think? Did Apple bring it to their Apple event this year? Or do you think they kind of just went under the carpet, just like the Note 9 did in my opinion? 
let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to everything under the sun when it comes to Vision All Access. Keep the subscribers going. We're up to 54 subscribers now, trying to get that way up there. Let your mom know, let your friends know, let your dog know. Anyone who has a YouTube account, let them know. Vision All Access is where it's at. And I will catch you guys on my next video. Peace.